A renewed energy fills the campus of Grand Canyon as the 2019-2020 season is upon us. After falling just short a season ago, a recharged effort is underway with guidance from a fresh perspective. A crop of uncharted talent joins forces with a group of seasoned veterans. Carlos Johnson! Oh, baby, did you guys see that move? All with one common goal. Is this the year they make the leap? What are the expectations for the new season? Who will have an impact? Lopes basketball is back, and we tip it off as we preview the season on The Dan Marley Show. Hello and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of the GC Lopes, Dan Marley, back for our seventh season together. You've got to be extremely excited about not only this season, but hosting the show with me. Unbelievable. Seven years. No, it's great to be back. It's been a long summer. Uh, we've been working hard and I'm anxious to see what this team has. And um, yeah, I'm anxious to be here. We're, uh, we're ready to go. Another 20 win season a year ago. Talk a little bit about uh, the good, maybe the bad uh, of last season. You had to be pretty pleased with how it ended yeah, up. A, a little, little ups, bit, obviously. Yeah, ups and downs. Yeah. I thought uh, talent wise, we were better than what we showed. Uh, we were in every game. Should have won a lot of games. Um, had one bad game, but besides that, I thought we showed well. Had a, uh, a little low in the, in the conference when Jared went down. You know, we were really rolling in the heart of soul of our team. Jared Martin had a knee injury, uh, lost three straight, but then kind of battled back. and. And again, got to the Western Athletic Conference Finals and lost to Mexico State. But proud of our guys, worked really hard. And uh, to be eligible for two years and to be able to get to the finals two years in a row was a great accomplishment. Yeah, and you went to Fullerton, big win there against LaSalle. Boise State came back here, a big win there, two-pointer. You battled Illinois, who's coming back here to GCU Arena this season. Northern Iowa, you also played them, they're coming back. Yeah, I'm excited about our schedule this year. You know, having Illinois here is going to be a really good team. Uh, playing here at uh, the GC Arena will be a good test for us early. Northern Iowa that really came on late last year. Uh, they're going to have a lot of guys back. That'll be a great test after beating them there. Uh, going to San Diego State, uh, going to New Mexico, uh, and then when the conference starts. Uh, playing Liberty at the Jerry Colangelo uh, Classic over at Talking Stick will be a, a really tough game. Uh, so this will be an exciting season. Carlos Alessandro Oscar. That's pretty much the guys that are coming back as far as those those starters are concerned. A lot of new faces on this year's team. Really is. So they're getting to know me. I'm getting to know them. Uh, are you getting along? Early? Yeah, I mean, every once in a while. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's it's a transition. You know, last year we were really big. This year we're a lot, we're a lot smaller, a lot of guards. Uh, so we're trying to figure things out. Um, got a lot of things in the works. So I think it's going to be a process. And, you know, our goal is always, I say it every year, is to be playing our best basketball uh, come wax season. A lot of guards. Does that mean ball movement, spreading the floor a little bit, kind of up-tempo? That's how we like to play, but we have to see. You know, you put a lot of trust in your guys when you do that. Um, so we'll just see how they react to it and how that's going. If not, uh, then I'll go back to calling a lot of plays and getting guys in certain, uh, certain situations where uh, they'll be successful. So, as I said, I got to learn a lot about these guys and a new style of play that we're going to have. But it's always going to try to be up tempo, kind of the same stuff we ran last year with just different personnel. It's not foreign, though. We've kind of seen these hybrid lineups, you know, uh, in the NBA. Kind of started it, and it's it's dripping down into the into the college. Right? Yeah, there's a, you know there's a lot of positionless. A lot of you know guys like to play outside. Ali's a, a really a, you know good three point shooter. He also post up so. Um, we'll continue to play that way. I always have, you know, last year we had Michael Finke and both Ali shooting a lot of threes and they were 6'10". So we've always played that way. So as I said, I got to figure out uh, how our guys are going to be more successful and, and put them in those areas. They're moving back that three-point line that, that uh, was money for you for a lot of years. Yeah. What are your, your thoughts about that and how it might impact I'd like the game? See, I'd like to see us make a few. But, uh, yeah, sure, that's you know, those don't, that, that doesn't scare our guys. Uh, they, they look forward to the challenge. Um, you know, we have to be, do a good job of mixing up a little bit, moving the ball, uh, getting downhill, getting to the basket, and if it's a good three, take it. Yep. A lot of new faces I mentioned uh, earlier on in this segment. Can you talk a little bit about some of those new faces? Javon Blackshear is a highly touted kid out of Shadow Mountain. Very excited about Javon. Freshman's going to be the face of this program for a long time. Very competitive, won a lot of state championships. 
uh, comes to work every day. Very talented, great teammate, uh, a true point guard, and that's what a coach always wants. So I'm excited about a guy, uh, about a guy like Javon. He's going to be a spark for us for a long time. Great personality as well. Jalen Fisher, the transfer from TCU. Yeah, we're still waiting on Jalen. We don't know if he's going to have a, uh, the waiver or not, uh, so he's not eligible at the moment. Uh, we'll find that out hopefully here in the next uh, week or so. Um, but uh, just an ultra-competitive, talented kid. A high level, um, high level player. If we get him eligible and he's able to play, uh, that'll change uh, our whole team. Mikey Dixon's been around the team for a while now. The transfer from St. John's going to have to wait a little while till that conference play in, in the first of the year. But it looks like he's a shooter. Shooter can really score it. Uh, as you said, we'll have to wait till the second half of the semester. That's when he'll be eligible. But he's been in the gym working hard. He can, uh, he can really shoot it and score. So uh, he'll be valuable when he's able to play. I know we're not going to see another local standout in, in Gabe McLaughlin, but. He certainly has brought leadership and he's uh, obviously helping out in, in, during the drill. I'm excited about Gabe. He's a born leader, a uh, very smart kid, very athletic. Uh, unfortunately, tore his meniscus. Uh, he's going to have surgery and then be out four to six months. But, you know, he is red shirt this year, so he'll still be around, be able to lead and, and help us get through it. But we really love him on the practice floor. And along with Javon for the next three years, he's going to be a handle. He's going to be hard to handle. And alongside you on the bench, Chris Crevelone returns as an assistant. But you've got Marvin Menzies, former head coach at UNLV, and before that, New Mexico State. And Isaac Chu, also a highly touted uh, assistant coach. Yeah, two great additions. Um, you know, Marvin has been out on the road. Uh, I recruited, or I mean, I, I, I hired him to, to be my recruiter. And that's what he does really, really well. A lot of relationships and has done a great job of that so far. Hard worker. Uh, you know, he's been at a lot of great programs. So I'm really excited to have him and what he's going to bring to us. And then Isaac has been great, uh, not only on the basketball floor, but he's also a fantastic recruiter. So uh, those are two home run hires. It all got started. Midnight Madness always seems to be kind of that benchmark where the, you know basketball is back and it didn't, didn't disappoint the, uh, the crowd as well as the teams in attendance. No, we're always excited for that. You know, the Havocs are back in town and they get to come and root us on with guy. Our, you know, we had nine new guys, so, you know, some of them seen them from sitting out last year, but the new guys, uh, they've been waiting for that moment. And as you said, it didn't disappoint. It was a great start to our season. Coming up, color analyst Scott Williams joins the show. What does he think it will take for the Lopes this year? He'll break it down next. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes. Canyon State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Read it. If they're resident, if you're not, give it to them. 
Get out, and then we have somebody come here. Get out. Heck yeah, I can sign that thing. It's a victory. Thanks, guys. All right. How about them votes, huh? Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Beatell alongside the Lopes TV color analyst, Scott Williams. Oh, I forgot to mention three-time NBA champion, Scott Williams. Scott, welcome back Thank to you. another season. It's good to be back. I'm so excited. I'm ready to go. Let's talk a little bit off the top about last season before we talk about this upcoming season. Another 20-win season for head coach Dan Marley and the Lopes. A little bit uh, highs, a little bit on the lows. Jared Martin goes down with an injury. They battle back through all of that, and they make another trip to the conference finals. Yeah, Jared Martin was a huge blow because he was Mr. Hustle. He was an extension of this coaching staff on the floor. Coach Marley did a nice job not letting this team splinter. Yep. Preseason was a little rough, but once they hit conference play, they start finding their momentum and their, their mojo. They rolled right through conference season, made it back to the conference finals. I think that was a successful year. You know, they had the big guy, Blumbergs. They had... Uh, uh, Drexel, who was great yeah. addition, running the floor. Of course, Matt Jackson, he added some strength inside. But they got some new guys coming in. That'll be pretty good to add to the guys that are already here coming back. Yeah, well, before we talk about those new faces, let's talk about three guys that are coming back. And Oscar Freire, Alessandro Labor, really their lone big man, and also Carlos Johnson. Yeah, I like Carlos Johnson. Let me start right there because I love the way this kid attacks the basket. He is absolutely fierce. There's nobody in the Western Athletic Conference that can stop him. When he puts his head down, he's determined to get to that rack. So great. And then, of course, Oscar Freire. Somebody does come over. He dishes it off to them. Him, and he comes in with those electrifying plays that just get this crowd and this Lopes fan so excited. Then the big guy, Labor, and play inside, post up, back to his basket. He can add to the lefty hook over the course of the summer. Of course, we know he can step out in the pick and pop situations and shoot the three. The thing I love about it, he's added something that's really going to help him. He's slimmed yeah. down. He's dropped 15 pounds of weight, turned that into muscle. Now he can run the floor because there are going to be a lot of times where they're playing three guard lineups, Frere at the floor. He's going to be required to get out and run the basketball floor. Those new guys, heavy guard, just an injection of guards. Let's talk about the young kid, Shadow Mountain standout. Wow. Javon Blackshirt. Uh, Jalen Fisher, the TCU transfer, and the St. John's transfer, Mikey Dixon, who we'll see after the first of the year. Well, I had a chance to put my eyes on Blackshear in practice, and I just get really impressed with me. Not, not afraid to be able to put guys in the right position, takes the ball to the basket at only 5'11". The kid, uh, Fish, Fisher, TCU, Jamie Dixon product, knows how to play the game. Really smart guy. And then uh, Mikey Dixon coming over from St. John's. Didn't get a chance to see him a lot yesterday, uh, last year on the, on the court, but in practice, he did a really nice job understanding the situation. I think that's really going to help Coach Marley and Coach Chu uh, under, help the players understand where they need to be because you got a lot of new pieces. you got to have that chemistry. Okay, we talk about it being a heavy guard lineup. You've mentioned Alessandro Labor really being the, the lone big man in the lineup. Michael Finke not here. Jared Martin had a little bit of size. Matt Jackson had a little bit of size. As a big, what are some of the things that the Lopes are going to really have to pay attention to this season not having a heavy big man they got to rebound by committee. They cannot afford or to get beat up on the offensive glass. Points in the paint will be huge. Got to limit those extra possessions that teams might be able to get advantage, size advantage on them. Rebound the basketball, and then they got to use their speed to their advantage. Get out, press the ball up and down the floor, get some easy baskets before that off a defense has a chance to set itself. But this heavy guard lineup could spread the floor, create some offense, ball movement, up-tempo type of a game that Lopes fans may be uh, looking forward to this season. Sure, when you get into that half-court set, got to get everybody spread out on the floor on a penetrating pitch. Up next, he filled up the stat book last season as a junior. What's in store for the WAC's second highest scorer? Kate Longworth sits down with Carlos Johnson when we return. Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP. Delivering water and power.
Canyon State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. I'm on my mission, no, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm on my mission. Don't get it twisted. I'm on my mission, no, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't get it twisted. Huh. I'm, I'm on my mission, no, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't get, get it twisted. Twist. Huh. Huh. I'm on my mission, no, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Well, one of those players we talked about off the top, of course, Alessandro Labor, Oscar Freyer, and that third is Carlos Johnson. Those are the returning starters for GCU. And Carlos Johnson, wow, he lit it up there in the WAC tournament. Uh, he really put the team on his shoulders during that and, and uh, had the rest of the team alongside. Yeah, he came, uh, you know, really played well at the end of the year. Um, you know, struggled a little bit early, found his game, um, had a great tournament, as you mentioned and has really worked hard this summer. So he's going to have to be a key piece for us to, to be good this year. Uh, Carlos has just got to continue to lead, figure out uh, when it's her, his turn to kind of take over the team and when it's his turn to kind of to facilitate. And that's something he's really been working on. And uh, I hope he does a good job of it because he's one of those guys, as you said, who can put us on his, on his shoulders and take over a team. But he's also have to, uh, to be a leader and get other guys involved because he's such a dynamic player that he's going to have to be guarded. So if he can facilitate and make other guys better, that's only going to make him stronger. Kate Longworth had an opportunity recently to catch up with Carlos Johnson. Drexel all the way near side. Johnson. Here we go with the three. Good. Oh my! Player up to Carlos Johnson. Well, Carlos, it's here your senior year. How would you evaluate your career so far here in the Lopes uniform? It's been really good, you know, last year it showed me that I can play at this level and come here and do what I'm supposed to do at a high level and you know, make the school proud of me. When you look back at your career, um, it's been unique in a Lopes uniform. There were times you were coming off the bench very successfully, but did that also kind of give you some extra motivation? I would say it didn't affect me at all. Once you put me on the court, I know I can produce, so I just knew I was always going to get my opportunity to get go out there and, you know, do what I was supposed to do, but, you know, I came off the bench because I was shooting it bad, and once you're shooting it bad, you know, take a step back, look at it, evaluate yourself, and then, go from there and then I, obviously it worked out for me. A lot of new guys on this team. How do you feel like you guys are gelling on the court? What's the chemistry like with this new group? Uh, I, I feel like we're gelling pretty good. I, the new guys are winners, you know, some of them coming from winning programs and they want to come here and win and they know that we got we to gotta execute at a high level to win. And it's just good that they're young, but you can tell they got a little experience on what to do out there. No. No, no. Oscar Fire Jr. As you go out there, the looks on a whole, what's the goal, but also knowing this is your senior year to make that impact. I just want to, you know, put on a great show every night and, you know, please the fans, but also come home with the WAC championship. You know, that's something that we ain't done yet. We just always got to have one mindset, one heartbeat, and we're going to do it. That's my biggest goal for my senior year. I don't got no personal accolades. I don't really look into that, but if whatever comes with it, it do. Lastly, just for you to have this career in Arizona, where your love for the game you know, blossomed, and now you get to end your collegiate career here in the state. What's that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. I spent two years at Shadow Mountain. You know, I won my first state championship there. So coming back here, I was you know, thinking like, why not win here? So it could be like, I won at both of the schools I was at in Arizona. So it would be big if I you know, go out with a bang here and win. And, but if not, you know, I just embrace it all. You know, we're all you know, open arms and love. When we return, he's around the team every day. We check in with Lopes insider Paul Coro for his thoughts on the season. 
As a teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders, you're giving them the tools they need to succeed. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside Lopes insider Paul Coral. Paul, back for another season of Lopes basketball. Let's begin by talking a little bit about last year. Another 21 win season for head coach Dan Marley. Yeah, that's four in a row. And the, the story of last year was Alessandro Labor and Oscar Freyer doing more of the same. They're back this season, but Carlos Johnson was the one that really came on and became the story. Developed into the leading scorer, had a couple 30 plus scoring games back to back in the WAC tournament and really became a dynamic go-to player. It took a little while though. I mean, he's, he started, then he came off the bench and then he really felt more and more comfortable as yeah. the season progressed. Well, his confidence is always at optimum. You know, yeah. he takes off 10 feet from the basket like he's going to dunk every time. But the shot was what was amazing. Early in the season, you weren't too sure about it every time. And by the end of the year, he was a 40% three-point shooter. Really saw it from a, really consistent with his form carrying over to this year. How about Ali Labor? He's uh, trim, he's looking sharp. Yeah, I need to get on the Ali yeah, Labor right. diet. Started <laughs> cooking both. for himself and learning how to trim down and really take care of his body. He had a little hand injury before the season, so he decided to focus on his fitness when he couldn't do a lot of other basketball stuff. And that helped him tremendously, especially with this type of team they'll have this year. Up-tempo team now, Ali Labor can keep up with them up and down the court. And that other returner is Oscar Freyer, high-flying Oscar Freyer, that now a senior. Where did that where did that time go? Yeah, career's flying by. His role will change a little bit this year as he learns to play more of the four position in this uh, kind of roster look that they have now with heavy guards. A lot of new guards, as you mentioned. Let's talk about many of them. Javon Blackshear, a guy from Shadow Mountain. He is highly touted local product. Yeah, everybody in Phoenix should be familiar with him yeah. from what they've done at Shadow with state championships. He's a four-star player, got a lot of national recognition, but uh, they love having him here. He's mature beyond his years with the way he leads the floor. He, he's a point guard who passes first, plays defense. You know, Dan Marley's going to love that kind of stuff but really uh, sees how he can include everybody else and, and picks up the pace with the ball willingly. A lot of transfers, Isaiah Brown, Mikey Dixon, Jalen Fisher at yeah. that guard spot. Yeah, Mikey and Isaiah, we've, uh, we've seen around here for a while. JJ Rhymes, all those guys put in a red shirt year and worked in the gym. Uh, Isaiah Brown it, it was at Northwestern. He's another guy who's gonna become a leader of this team. He's really taking control of the huddle. He's a vocal, really smart player. Uh, can play both guard positions. Uh, Jalen Fisher from TCU was a former All-Big all 12 honorable mention. He's got strong, mature body with skills to, to shoot it, play the point, do a lot of things. It's just a different team. Dan Marley loves these type of guys that are really like kind of the dog mentality that he likes. We talked a little with Dan and with, with Scott Williams as well about this heavy guard lineup. How do you see it playing out? It's going to spread the floor, create a little bit of offense, ball movement? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a drastic change from last year when they were one of the biggest teams in the nation. Now they're just going to get up and go, and that's the way they practice and train and condition. So it puts pressure on the other teams as long as they keep that mentality of going hard all the time. We take a look at the upcoming schedule. The Lopes tip off the season with an exhibition game against CSU San Bernardino on October 30th. The season opener is November 5th when they take on Davenport. And November 8th marks a Power 5 matchup as the Big Ten sends the Fighting Illini of Illinois to GCU Arena. A reminder that all home games this season will be broadcast on Fox 10 Extra, Channel 45, Cable 9. Up next, expectations are high for this season, but what does the head coach think of his team's chances? We ask him when we return. No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP, delivering water and power. We needed 
one more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes! No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry and Dan back with you. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the schedule this season. Great teams coming up. We've got Illinois coming into town, Northern Iowa as well. Yeah, it'll be a, a tough schedule. I mean, our first game is since San Bernardino is a really good team. Uh, they'll push us. Illinois is much improved and their style of basketball is, is really tough. So uh, our guys are gonna have to come in ready to play. And then of course, Northern Iowa was a team that uh, was really uh, improved last year. and. We had a, a good fortune to go in there and beat them last year, so I'm sure they want a little bit of payback. Illinois, are they going to be much different from the team you faced in Champaign? Well, they'll be different in, in, uh, in talent. They're better, but style of play will be exactly the same. They pressure you full court, uh, up the passing lanes, hard to get any kind of offense. They play fast offensively, very physical. So as I said, especially with our size this year, it's going to be a great test. It looks like New Mexico State obviously is the team to beat once again. A number of their, their returners are coming back. A lot of their offense, I believe over 70% of their offense is returning. Seattle looks like a team to look out for as well. Utah Valley has a new coach in Madsen. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a great league again this year. Uh, as you said, New Mexico State I think lost one player and has added a few, so they'll have pretty much everybody back from a 30-win uh, team. Seattle has everybody back. Uh, they had a disappointing year last year, had a lot of injuries, so I expect them to play well. Utah Valley with the new coach. Uh, they lost a lot of guys, but I'm sure they're ready to go. Uh, Bakersfield, on and on. Baptist will be good. Uh, UTRGV has really come on strong, so uh, our league will be a challenge night in and night out. All right, Coach, thanks so much for joining oh, us. Oh, good to be back. Thanks. Oh, I know you're overjoyed with it. That's head coach Dan Marley. I'm Barry Vitell. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Dan Marley Show.